so i did not get in the car i decided to go back with him so we went to the hospital the nurse there was very mad because he could she couldn't understand excuse me she couldn't understand why he would do such a thing to my face so she was like what oh, why are you doing this to her even in her condition can you first take her to the scan so that you can check whether the baby is harmed so i was taken to the scan room i did the scan i thank god the baby was safe and uh, I, was, I went back i was given some medication some ointments and i went back home so when we reached home i asked him to give me a break so he went away for a week and then after that now he came back uh, but still the wounds were very fresh they, they I had scars all over I couldn't even get out of my house because where do you go with a disfigured face everyone is, will be like what happened to your face what is wrong because people think you are living a good life you look good so they think all is well with you so I I went I just stayed at home for for a while actually to be honest i stayed at home for the rest of the pregnancy would see some scars no matter how much makeup i tried to put on and you could still see some uh, like black eyes some few marks on the cheeks they were still very visible and i'll insert a picture here so that you can see and it was not easy for me to be honest because i had to explain to everyone because they are like what happened to your face and then you had a smooth face what is wrong and then no i didn't know that that was just but the beginning of a toxic relationship and it was bad it was really bad now here i went had another cesarean section i delivered the baby safely i thank god we came back home it was all good until uh, like when the baby was like a few months old he started cheating on me he started cheating on me <clears throat> forgive my voice he started cheating on me and then when i would confront him he would just tell me get out of my house there's a, even there's a time he even called my brothers one of my brother by then was in the taxi industry he was like come for your sister and take her home so he chased us away at night so my brother came for us and we went back home then the following day he comes with a friend and tries to to say he's sorry let's just go back so i would we, it was like a um a repetition of some of of some sort so after that it was now after the after us coming back home now it was another another thing one issue after another one issue after another and i didn't notice that i was i was so stressed that i would eat myself like i would stress i would eat my stress away i would i would eat my stress away so over time i was so much I had put so much weight on because one thing he's an excellent provider there's nothing you're lacking in the house but minus peace so you have every food every all the food you want in the house is available but you do not have peace of mind so i would eat myself out i would really eat and i was over it at my heaviest as i was 106 kgs i'm going to insert a picture here and it it continued it continued for a while because he would cheat or when you call, some ladies would call him at night and they would tell him i'm pregnant and they're calling at at uh, around midnight when they are sure you are there they you can hear they would say oh i'm pregnant i want i want to come i want you to come here like the things they used to say they were just heartbreaking and um uh, we would argue a lot because i was like why are you doing this to me what have i done to you <coughs> like why are you doing this to me why have I, what have i done to you to deserve all this and um, he would just like apologize and say i'm sorry it will not happen it will not happen again it was the devil yeah like all men most men say it is the devil so 
I would forgive him and we'd continue. After a while now, it it escalated a little bit because this time round, um, there was this lady who was asking for money, and I confronted him about it and I asked him, why why is she texting you? Why is she asking you for money to go get her her tooth and her hair her tooth removed and her hair done? And at this point now, he got so furious. What were you doing? What were you checking on my phone? He he grabbed he grabbed my clothes, started throwing them outside. Mind you, we are living in the fourth floor, so he's taking the suitcases and throwing them out. And there was some electricity lines that play in the plot we used to live. So every time he's hitting those poles, I don't know what was happening, but some sparks would come out would come out and now it was like a center of attraction everybody's like everybody now is outside checking what is not going on what is happening what is wh what is all this commotion and yeah after that now i decided you know what i think let me just go and start a life by myself i shifted and i go went and looked for a house after i, I got a house i settled in and i started like packing my clothes and my baby's clothes after like two days he came he called me oh honey i'm sorry forgive me it will never happen again i'm so sorry you're the one i love and i want you in my life and i was like are you sure you have changed and he's like yes i have really changed it will never happen again so i forgive him and we continued living um it was nothing changed he was still the same old him nothing changed by the way nothing changed so after that i was like you know what i have had enough now this time round he's hitting on someone that is very close to me like someone very close who who told me like hey by the way and he sh they, they showed me the the evidence that was hap everything of everything that was happening so at this point now i'm like why does all this have to happen to me? I'm trying so hard not to have a broken marriage. I want my children to come to grow up in a complete family. Like, why is all this happening to me? So I decided to shift because I was like, I won't tolerate cheating because I am faithful to you. Why are you being unfaithful to me? And I, I shifted. Now, when I shifted this time round, he came and apologized and he said he's so sorry. We should even organize how I should, the, 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 how he will pay my dowry. And um, of course, now I have I had to involve my biological father. And when my biological father came, uh, they talked and they agreed. And all that setup was just a bad setup to begin with because it came with a lot of conflict of interest. Now, you know, considering that now I'm, a, I'm from a separated background, my father has remarried, and now where do I take the dowry? I take to my dad's. My mom wants to, the portion of the dowry as well. She's not there. She's she's living a, she's she's living on her own. My father has another wife, so it was like it was it had a lot of conflict, and I consulted with a few people. Even consulted with them with a few close friends and they everyone was telling me you know in our tradition you're supposed to take your dowry to your father so when 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 my mom had that she was so angry and she started saying i should never talk to her forever and never a man and it was a lot of conflict of interest until I was like, now what is going to happen? Why is all this happening right now? So we organized the dowry, but when we went to my father's house, I was actually surprised because no one was there from my family. It was just a, a, a far neighbor who was there and everything else was just like strange people I, I didn't know. So the occasion was there, it was, it was just fine, but everyone else was missing in action so after that now my i think my dad told me now you you need to start investing and i told him it's okay so i asked him how do i invest here and he told me i, sh I have some land that you should take uh, i i'm going to list for you i'm going to list five acres to you and you should be 
you should pay you should pay per acre you should pay 12000 and uh, he told me also you should buy some little sheep so that by December you're going to sell them off and he told me to buy how many they were 10 10 sheep one was going for 6000 so that was another 60000 so plus the 12000 12, plus the other 60 of the 5 acres that was 120000 so after that i would i i, I gave him the money and uh, i was hopeful then after a while i started thinking by the way i sh should hire someone to take care of the to take care of the, the 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 goats so we hired someone after that you'll be told you need to send money for for something and uh, you need to buy food for the for the sheep you need to buy salt for the sheep they need immunization they need to be to be dewormed and little did i know all that was a scam so uh there were no sheep and there were no there were no sheep and there was no land that was 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 leased in my name so i lost 120k just like that and it brought a lot of conflict because it was like oh even your parents even your father is has swindled us money uh, what type of a family are you you know and it was so bitter for me and at at that point i i just told myself you know what this marriage is not even going to work. Like I have tried my best to make it work, but it's not just working. But he was like, no, it's okay. We can work things out. And then after that scenario, he goes and then he comes back home. That time I can't say he was drunk or he was because I wasn't there. The house manager at that point was the one who told me, he was the one who told me that he was there and he took all the medicine in the house and took the room heater wherever he took them i didn't know the next thing i'm being called he's at he's he's at the hospital so i went and uh, he was at the hospital got him discharged then we went home it's at that point he started talking things that didn't make sense to me because he would say oh they are following me and then i would ask him who then he would say they are outside and they want to kill me um i would ask him questions but he would not answer me i was like why are you acting like you're losing are you okay why are you acting as if you're you're going mad and he would tell me at him, no it's okay i'm okay there's nothing wrong with me he would like overlook everything like whatever he had he just said it's like doesn't make sense anymore so i was like just confused myself as well so at that point i started having issues and i was like i need to have security for my children and it was at that point i requested him to give me capital to start my business and he was gracious enough to give me a hundred thousand and i started my business which by then uh, was a beauty shop that had beadwork and beauty products. I'll try and find some pictures and insert here so that you can see what I'm talking about. And after that, uh, that was now another challenge because I started now working. Uh, and then he started having another affair with another woman. So when I found them out, when I found out, I, I wrote it on, I posted it on my Facebook uh, on my Facebook page and um, the lady was like so furious with me and she was like pull, pull down that post or you'll know that I know every policeman in that area that you are living in and uh, I told I told her I will not pull out the post I will not pull down the post because it is the truth and uh, she went and reported me and I was summoned and I went and I told I, I showed the policeman the evidence but he could not he could not he could not side with me or side with justice because I was I was offended and uh, she was like you're spoiling my name but what what are you doing to me why can't you see what you're doing to me and she was like no you're just tarnishing my name and I was like the policeman told me madam you either pull down the post or I take your fingerprints. And I was like, well, why do I have to 
get my fingerprints taken well i can just pull down the post so i just deleted the post after that she demanded to be paid ten thousand, of which i did not pay him i did not pay her sorry he paid her and uh, after that now he came home after two weeks of that scenario he came home drunk and uh, that is where now another another major epic thing happened because he just came home drunk not so drunk but he was drunk and he came and took the knife and started tearing and breaking everything in the house he started with the sofas he had very nice leather seats he started tearing them down he tore everything broke the tv broke all the utensils from from the wall unit he was just breaking everything then as if that was not bad enough he came took my laptop started breaking it beyond repair and took took the iron box started smashing it on the bed took the knife back again he, he started now tearing all my clothes he tore all my clothes he tore all of them and then by this time now because i'm just scared the the kids and they they were in the other bedroom with the house help i'm just screaming and then when the the neighbor came, the neighbors came they're like what are you doing why are you doing this and like then he said at I, he started saying, I have another man. And I'm like, which man? I don't have another man. Why are you doing this? Then he, he said, um, he, the, that neighbor asked, asked him, now what does breaking your things and, and ruining everything, will, how will it benefit you? People sit down and talk, why are you doing this? He wouldn't listen. He told that man, is there anything here that belongs to you? Have you bought anything or any of these things that I have bought in this house? Mind your own business and leave my house right now. So the neighbor was gracious enough to, gracious enough to send the wife to call me outside. So the wife came, called me, we went upstairs because they were living on top of us. And uh, we went there with my children and my house help. We spent there the night. So the following morning, I called the sister now to my ex. And uh, she she came and she she saw the everything, how everything was like. And then she asked him, for how long are you going to continue doing this to this girl? For how long are you going to continue doing all this? What is wrong with you? And... Uh, I decided to go, I went, I looked for a house, I got a one bedroom, I started life again afresh. So you can imagine how much money I'm wasting on moving, moving from one house to another, paying rent, paying deposit. And mind you, most of these agents and most of these landlords, they will not refund the deposit because there is no prior notice like you have said you are going to. You have said you are going to return, you are going to move, so they, they will not refund you anything. So I would waste a lot of money. And when I moved there, then it was so peaceful. And then he said he decided to come and apologize. I don't even know. I don't know. But I still forgave him, sadly. I forgave him. Because I was really determined for my marriage to work. I was really determined for my children to grow in a complete family. And I didn't even mind what I was going through so long as I saw my children with their dad and us having a complete family. But with, with what I, by that time, all these things that are happening, I started losing I started hating him because now there's no there's no love the love is dead now because of the things he's making me go through the 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 the, the, the depression the stress the cheating the violence the everything here now piled up piled up like this it took a toil on me and i was just there so I, people would ask me why are you still with living with him uh is it because of the money or what is it so I was like, you know what, maybe I'm here because I'm afraid I won't make it on my own. And I started telling God I need a business idea and I, I need a business idea to add on what I had. So I I, I decided I want to do nails because I, I have always been very passionate about nails. So I remember that day I told him, you know, I want, I have been thinking and I would like to start a nail business and uh, would you mind supporting me? And he told me, 
that is a waste of money and he doesn't have any money and i remember telling him you know what with or without your support i will i'll start that business so i forgot something at this point now when i started the other male business uh, the other business of beauty and beadwork those selling those cosmetics yeah cosmetics it was doing very well i thank god had saved up a lot and um, not a lot per se but it was enough to do whatever i wanted to do by that time considering the great spirit i had I had i had with the business um that time it was uh, that time now the alcohol was poured you remember there's a time that alcohol was poured all over so that time he lost the business because he was in the alcohol industry he lost his job and he was now very humble and uh, because now he didn't have a job so i would he would ask me uh what are we going to do because sadly i discovered that he wasn't even saving anything so at that moment i was like i i knew i was saving to buy land but he he just i don't know by bad luck he just found one of the receipts that I had kept. I know some of these receipts that have the ledger balance down there. So he saw him and he was like, oh, honey, you have all this money. Oh, now I want us to do something. We can buy a car and then we put it in the taxi industry because by then there were no Uber. And then after that, it will be giving us money and... Uh, I was like, it's okay. And we went, looked for a car and found one. It was an Allion. I'll insert a picture here and we bought the car. When we bought the car, um, he gave it to, I knew nothing. I knew nothing about vehicles. So I was entrusting him to run that business. So he, the first driver that was given was very responsible. And the first week he gave us the 7,000 because it was supposed to be 7,000. It was supposed to be 1,000 per day. And uh, him to pay himself and to fuel the car. So the first week was okay until the 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 second from the second week moving onwards so like when now the car is around three months the next driver that was given he was a reckless driver you're being called he has had an accident he has hit someone he has been hit he's driving while drunk so the the vehicle was always in the garage in the garage in the garage so the little money that i had left was all getting drained and being taken to the garage so the last accident he hit some very senior person that i will not mention here and it took a toil on me and i was like you know what i'm so frustrated right now i just need to sell this car i took it to the mechanic and it was fixed he took it sorry he took it to the mechanic and it was it was just bad the mechanic got did the wrong paint you know that car blue the alien, the color blue of that alien, the alien, what do I say? That blue for alien. He painted something almost green on that on that vehicle, and it looked completely different. It was not looking good, and I was like, after after that, um, he it was just there. The car was brought parked there and it was just getting wasted away so i was like mm, you know what I, I i really need to sell this car so i decided to sell the car to cut the long story short i decided to sell the car and actually didn't sell it for that much uh but it was fine he was like now give me the final chance this is the final final chance mind you this is almost the 10th chance i'm giving him and he's still not changing he's still being toxic in my life and i'm still foolishly forgiving him and uh, yeah i forgave him and uh, we agreed my things the things i had bought and the things he had bought we give them out we start life afresh now we moved to that my new house and because he told me actually this is the house i, I had seen and i wanted us to move we live in this house so i was like it's okay so we moved we gave out those things our old things and we started buying new things we, that was in may 2017 so we bought other things and life was good uh for a short while 
because now in August it was my birthday. We did a very big birthday. I'll try and set a picture here. Then afterwards is when now everything changes. This person is always communicating with this contact named Keongo. And I was like, this man, what are they talking with this other man? Like for all these hours, like for all these minutes, for all these times, all these call logs, you know, because that time we used to be free. His phone was my phone and my phone was his phone because now we had decided now let's start a new page. Uh, also, I deceived myself to, 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 to be honest. So um, he was just being toxic. And I remember there's a point I had missed earlier on when he would just be violent and one of my brothers called me and asked me, do you want us to come for you when you are dead there? What are you still doing with that man? Can you just move on and live your life? And I still couldn't move. I still couldn't leave him, sadly. And it was so bad, actually, because now he had put fear in me like... I was even afraid of doing life alone. I was even afraid he has he had broken my wings because I was this strong, independent woman, and he had just made me feel so 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 weak, like I can't make it without him. I need him in my life, and I, I had to change to work on myself first and change that mentality. So at that point, now he decided to to continue talking with this contact. And this contact was bothering my mind. So I decided I'm going to investigate this contact. And you know, us ladies, we investigate better than FBI, right? So I took it upon myself and I started investigating. Little did I know, this same, same contact is the same wife that is in Dubai. Now she's coming back to Kenya and they want to they want to meet up and they, they have, they had made plans. They had even talked because now I took the phone and I was, I saw the chat that was going on on Facebook and I continued chatting with her and she couldn't even discern. It was not him who was chatting with her and I would ask her questions like now, what do you want me to do for you? And she would say she wants me to put for her, she, he, she wants him to put for her a boutique and the, their life to move on. So I was like, hmm, okay, so this is what is happening. I confronted him about it and... Um, it was so sad because at the same same point, the bo his boss fired him. And at that point, I was like, I was the sole breadwinner in the house. So I don't know what the other one was promising him from Dubai, but the fateful day was 22nd of September 2017 was another nightmare because now I was there. And we were talking all these things. Why are you still communicating with her? Same old story. She's the one who wants me. I don't want her. I don't want anything to do with her. And it was like, you know what? This is too much. Like, I can't even deal with it. And I started discussing with my brother, one of my brothers. And I would tell him, this guy, I don't think he'll ever change. He's just going to continue tormenting me and all. I think it's high time I stopped dating. I stopped. I broke this marriage off. And I start dating someone else. And uh, he was just like, you know what, sis, whatever you decide to do, I'm going to support you. So I was just there, but I was feeling so heartbroken. Like, you promised to change. Like, why are you still doing this to me? What, what, what is wrong with you? Why can't you just stay, change and move on and stop doing all this to me? But he couldn't. That was in him. He couldn't change. So the fateful date of September 22nd, 2017, he waited for me to go to work. While I was at work, he carried everything and left. So the, the agent was calling me like, Lillian, why are you shifting and you have not told us? And I was like, I have not shifted. And he was like, your husband was here and he has carried everything and he has left. So I was like, what do you mean? So I called my brother and it. I couldn't even get hold of him. So I was like, what is not going on? I called him. He was not picking my phone. So I was like, so I asked the, I called back the agent and I was like, can you go and confirm that 
it is indeed my house so he went and he confirmed and i was like where are my children they are here seated on the floor so i was like what that now was a deal breaker for me like you can do anything to me you can hurt me all you want but when you touch my children you touch my heart that was a no go zone for me that was the deal breaker for me so i was like okay thank god i went thank god i had some money saved up i went to the bank i withdrew some money called my mom because my mom is an excellent bargainer we went and we went to gekomba bought other furniture and we came back but when i was while well, i was at gekomba buying those furniture uh i would talk to god and i would tell god god I don't want this again. I do not want this pattern again. There's a cycle, there's a cycle that is repeating itself in my life and I do not want it in my life anymore. And I went back and I told myself, you know what? We went back, arranged the house and I saw the hand of God because the man that was selling us the furniture was just telling me, I don't know you, but I'm feeling Holy Spirit telling me I should sell to you things in affordable manner. I am a pastor. I don't even remember the church that he 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 serves, but he was just telling me, I don't know you, but you know I couldn't just tell him everything, but I knew God was at work at that point. And I started life again. Now at this point, it's 2017, I was like, you know what, I need to take time off. I need to just breathe and relax and focus on my life, focus on my business, and focus on my children. And that is what I did. And um, 2017 was over, 2018, 2019, 2019 or 2018, at the tail end of 2018 or the beginning of 2019, I met this other guy and he was an amazing guy and uh, we would talk but someone somewhere would not let us date in peace. He has moved on, he has married, he has even gotten a daughter but he will not let me move on in peace. And that's how you know when you are dating a toxic person, they are just narcissists. They will never leave you alone, they are just in your life to torment you. So he would call this guy, he would stalk this guy, he would tell him, leave my wife alone. He would abuse him, he would tell him all sorts of things. And I didn't know it, it was building up in this new guy and he was just there. And I was telling myself, now what do I do? He would come to the house because I didn't, I had not shifted the house I was living. He would come, bang, bang the door with a lot of force, cause chaos, cause commotion in the plot. And I was just there and I couldn't open the door. So sometimes my house help would think it is me who is knocking from outside. Come while I was at work, come open. Then I would meet him in the house. It was a lot of emotional and psychological torture, to be honest. And I told myself, you know what? All this got to end. And I would tell him, you know what? Can you stop stalking my life? Can you stop? Just leave me alone. Like, I do not want you in my life. You chose your path. Can you stick to it? And he wouldn't even listen because him, he felt entitled. He felt like I am his property. And whatever he felt like, whenever he felt that much entitlement, he wouldn't allow me to date or move on with my life in peace. So this guy this new guy was being tormented he was being abused chain of messages threats insults and little did i know it was getting into his head and it was just bad then now i was like now i need to show him that it's it's not always about him i would tell him you know what can you please just leave me alone alone but he wouldn't and yeah he wouldn't just leave me alone. And um, it was bad because now I decided, you know what, I need to put a stopper. I need to put a stopper. Like I have to move. My life has to move on. Like I have to forget him and move on. And because I, I, I loved this new guy uh, and he was a father figure to my children, I said in this video, I'm going to be completely honest. So with myself and to inspire people out here who are going through the same or people who who 
who have gone through the same things and he was a father figure to my children you know is it is one thing to be a provider and it's another thing to be involved in your children's life like he was there with the children actually it's the love he had for the children that actually drew me closer to him and he was he he was like kindly let's get let's get start our family together let's get get pregnant for me and this girl will brush off from our lives and um, you'd keep telling me you need to you need to give birth for me conceive my baby you know the way you guys say please is alien is alien is alien is alien is alien and that time i was clicking 30 i was like you know what by 30 i also need a baby so i was like it's okay again a huge mistake because wrong foundation uh but yeah i'll talk about that one later so on this at this point in the in my life i was like no 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 um and um this must work now because i have been through so much already that it should work or i was at least hoping it is going to work so uh i confirmed i was pregnant january 31st 2020 i confirmed i was pregnant and i told him and um, he was happy he was excited or so i thought i don't know so uh, the second, the first day, the first day of February, the second day, the third day, this, this now, another lady calling at night, she's just calling, 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 and I'm like, why don't you want to pick your call, who is it that you don't want to receive these calls from, and he told me, uh, it's, 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 it's another business person, and I was like, at this, at, at this time, a buzzer would call you at this time and I'm like, what? Okay. So I crammed the number and I texted and it was a lady and she asked me, would you call, can you, can we talk? Can I call you? And he was like, yeah, you can call. And when she called, he acted dead. He acted like he does, he does not exist. He didn't even want to breathe or even speak so that the lady does not hear. And I was so took a toil on me my anxiety was on another level i started having panic attacks anxiety attacks i was just there like no why what did i ever do where are all these things happening to me when will i ever settle when will i ever be say at least finally now i am happy finally now i am complete why is all these things happening to me and then now it was so bad because it was so bad because right now I'm pregnant already and I was just there. So February 4th, it was over between us and it took a toil on me because now I was so depressed. I'm pregnant. I don't know what to do. It was just on another level. Like it is misfortune after misfortune after misfortune after misfortune. All this one person like... You try you you think you get you get it right but you are not getting it right what is not happening what is eating you up what is making all these things like happen to you so I was like I was devastated I went back to being stressed having anxiety being depressed and everything was just everywhere I could not even move I could not even go to work my clients would call i'm just there I'm, I'm feeling like i don't want to pick up my phone you know like depression hits you slowly and you before you know you are depressed actually you are going through a very rough time and it was so bad because now it is february 2020 and i'm like i'm going to take a month rest off then march i'm going to start working and it was like okay so i already have an arrears of mm, or oh, no, I didn't, I, I, school fees, rent, everything was just so overwhelming. So everything started becoming a burden to me. So that is March, April, May, those are three months. Mind you, I'm paying, uh, I was paying the, that house, uh, the house and the shop rent to one person. So three months, that shop rent and, uh, shop rent and, uh, 
house rent was amounting to 25,000. So in the within three months, I had already accumulated an arrears of 75,000. And I was helpless. Where do I get 75,000? I'm not working. There's no any source of income. I'm pregnant. I'm depressed. Uh, hey, hey, my goodness. I don't even know, how, know how, how to begin, but it was just so traumatizing. It was just so hectic and agreed on an affidavit or whatever it's called. And I said, maybe if I don't get all that money, we can be doing, we can be having, uh, when I pay for at night time, I take something. So I moved from Kikuyu, I went to Gidurai, tried to restart my business there, where it flopped. Gidurai, <laughs> mm -mm. life is different there. Like Gidurai, I thought because the population is a lot, I'm going to, I'm going to have a lot of customers, but I was wrong. I was so wrong. I didn't even get a client, not even a single one client. So like, I was like, now this shop is still start accumulating rent again. I need to think and I need to think fast. So what do I do? You know, I decided to go back home. Now going back home, it was different because now I was not just going to go back home. I, I started, there was, the, at home we had a very huge um, chicken shed, Nyumbaya Kuku that was outside so i decided i told my mom i want to come and renovate that place because right now i don't have any money left and i don't have a source of income and i have lost almost everything so i need to start my life from somewhere and at that time remember i'm still pregnant so i i started renovating there i renovated my brother helped me i renovated the place and i moved in and I stayed there, so when the due date came, I remember calling my baby daddy now for this baby that I was carrying, and uh, he told me, I'm sorry, I have a family now, and I was like, what? And yeah, he told me, no, he can't support me because he has a family now, and I was devastated, I was, I was just crushed, and I was, I was devastated, to be honest, so... I was helpless. I don't have any source of income. I have lost almost everything I have worked hard for. All my electronics are gone. I'm trying to get them back one by one. I have a timeline that I need to beat that deadline because if I don't meet the deadline, it's all, it's all gone. I'm going to lose everything. So it was a lot of pressure on me. But I remember God has always been there for me because at this point now, I'm almost giving birth. I don't have any money. I don't have anything. The government hospitals are on strike. At this point, I had this friend called Liz. Liz, my mom, may God bless you. May the Lord do you good. May you never lack. This friend of mine, my goodness, she would mobilize her friends. They would bring me food at home. She, br she would bring me clothes. I remember there's a point like when i remember there's a point when i was so down and i called her and i told her we don't even have food and she came brought me food please may god bless you may you never lack and i can't wait for the time i'm going to to have enough because i'm going to bless you the way you blessed my life and i remember that time she came and uh, brought me food, brought me baby clothes. And when that, that time when I was almost due, she would keep on calling me, checking on me, like she was just a guardian angel that was sent by God with a mission for me because she was just there checking on me. I remember there was a time I told her, I think I, I have, I'm past due date. And she she was like, what, let me, let me post your story somewhere and see what we can do. And she organized everything, paid my Uber, Wow. There are people just that God should bless more. And please, may God bless you. May God do you well. And in their time of need, may the Lord always remember you. And may you never lack anything. Because the way you stood with me, it's only God who can bless you. It's only God who can reward you. And I remember that time now. I have to go from home to Larry. Going to Larry, 
this hospital they are like we don't do a repeated scan mind you this is my third scan now so they are like we can't do a repeated scan and we are we are already at Larry Hospital. So I, I was thinking, now what do I do? I, I don't want to call Liz again. I don't want to bother her. And at all that point, I told God, between me and poverty that time, I had, I think, 35 shillings. And I told God, now, God, you need to come. And you need don't even send anyone. Just come. You as God, just come. And it was at that moment out of nowhere. Believe me, believe you me, this small boy had taken some some pressure medicine because they had quarreled with the brother and he wanted to commit suicide and he's rushed there. So the, 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 the hospital had called an ambulance and voila, me, me, I got a ride from Larry to Naivasha through them through the ambulance actually that was the first time i was ever in the ambulance and the nurses there they were gracious enough to give me the bed and the boy was just there seated next to me and we were rushed to naivasha hospital went there everything was just good flowed smoothly i saw the hand of god my brother came through for me may god bless you may he do you well may you never lack me in, in your times of trouble may the lord answer you and it was just amazing. And actually, my baby is now a big girl. And I thank God I'll insert a picture here. And uh, yeah, it has not been easy. I have not yet reached where I am supposed to be. But I thank God for where I am right now. I managed to move from the chicken shed house. I came to where I'm living here, where I'm, I am living here currently. And God has been faithful. God has been faithful. I have restarted my business here in Dogoto. And I know God is going to bless the work of my hands. Yes, I know it is a whole a lot. But I keep standing and I keep moving and I keep working hard for my children yes there are days that we have gone without food there are days my kids are sent home for school fees there are days that i am just i just sit here and just cry because i'm feeling overwhelmed i'm feeling stressed but one thing i promised myself i will never give up and i'll never lose hope it has not been easy yes but God has been faithful. God has been sending me helpers from my pastors. May, may God bless you, my pastors. God has been faithful. God has been sending me helpers. And I know it is not, I'm not there yet, but I want to thank God right now because I'm not where I used to be. Yes, it is overwhelming. Being a single mother is so overwhelming. So you all the bills are looking at you like this, especially in this tough moments when everything is just so expensive there are days that you 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 are just there you don't even get a single customers the babies are here waiting for you to bring home something but i keep on keeping on because if i give up who will my children look after who will look after my children who will my children look up to i have to work hard for my children it's not easy, especially when you have and you have irresponsible baby daddies, baby daddies that do not care about their children, baby daddies that won't even send you anything to raise your, their children. You're just there doing it alone. But I keep encouraging myself in the Lord to know that though it tarries, it though it is tough right now, a time is coming where when I will sit and enjoy with my children and tell them, look, this is the doings of the Lord. So I hope this video has encouraged someone. If you're out there struggling, keep on keep on keep on doing what you're doing. Don't lose hope. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God. God God knows. He knows even when sometimes you feel like God, we feel like God has deserted us. Sometimes we feel like God is not, God is not uh, working towards us. Like, like it's like He has forgotten us. I want you to always encourage us, according to Isaiah eight eighteen, that as for you and uh, and your children, you are a, you are of signs and wonders. And God has not brought you this far to leave you now, and it can only get better. I know right now I may not be where I want to be, but I want to thank God that I'm not where I used to be. So this video encourages someone. And remember, no matter what, do not give up hope. And when you see these red flags, don't wait for the situation to be so bad. I'm going to be talking in my next video. I'll do um a, uh, a video on the lessons I've learned 
why the foundation why the foundation is very important i thank god because god has been working in me through me and god has been dealing with me showing me where things went wrong showing me what things i did that weren't meant to be done and sana sana the point i want to emphasize on is the foundation you have to get the foundation right so if you're watching this video kindly give this video a thumbs up like comment and share 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 to as many as possible um, as um, someone may, may may be there feeling like they want to give up tell them to watch lillian who is going through the same thing and we are going to make it no matter what comes no matter what goes our children will grow our children will, will thrive our children are they are of signs and wonders and above all our children are not a mistake you know sometimes you'll hear people tell you you know what you are you're frustrating your children you they do not know they do not know what it takes to be a single mother they they do not know the things the struggles we go through they do not know the tears we cry to god every day they do not know when we are breaking every day but we keep showing up and sh working hard and keeping on a smile and telling people you know what i don't know about tomorrow but i know that god is going to come through for us so find healing may you heal may you heal so that you can be a better person heal allow healing allow god to heal you allow god to work allow god to work in you allow god to manifest things in you that only him can manifest because it's only him who has who holds the future and one thing i know about me i one thing i know about my children that according to the word of god in isaiah 8 18 as for me and my children we are of signs and wonders it may not show right now but god is not a man that he may lie i know in future in days to come i'll come back here to this channel and i'm going to give you a story of what god has done so may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord do you well and always remember to keep smiling, keep believing in God, and keep believing in yourself. Bye.